Yes, unquestionably, Paul was interested in the process of inventing, invention, and bringing that invention into the world. When I was a young researcher at Bell Labs back in the 1960s, uh, I got this report on my desk one day, and it was by someone named Paul Barron of RAND. And it was all about packet switching and how we should do packet networks instead of the kind of telephone network we had in those days. And I thought it was just a beautiful, a beautiful piece of work. I first learned about Paul through his sequence on distributed communications, uh, which he published at RAND in the early 1960s, because section 9 of that, which most people don't realize is there, is on security. And so I learned about him through, through the um, uh, RAND series when I was trying to learn about cryptography and security. And there was very little in the open literature. This was a real find. What really struck me about his experience at RAND and working on packet switching and trying to figure out, as I understand it, they were trying to figure out a way to secure essentially communication so that it couldn't, couldn't be knocked out with, for instance, a nuclear bomb, which everybody was pretty worried about at that time. If a country's defenses would fall apart under the first attack, it would create a temptation for someone to fire first. If both countries had controlled communication systems, they were able to withstand the attack then a much more stable environment results. His thinking being that, you know, if you couldn't drop a bomb and knock out communications, well, maybe you wouldn't drop a bomb. Paul Barron's elegant solution was the distributed network. Here, numerous junctions called nodes have several connections to other nodes. As long as each node retains some connections, the system is nearly indestructible messages will still be able to find a way through the network. Another way to put Paul's legacy would be in terms of his being a visionary. I mean, here he is in the early 60s talking about encryption being widely spread, publicly available, publicly scrutinized, all the layers of security removed. I mean, what a crazy, wonderful way to look at something and how right in hindsight and how wrong it appeared at the time. Telephone company skeptics argued that the cost of having this overlapping or redundant system was prohibitive. But Barron said no. They say, well, we have all these Bell Lab folks, and if they can improve something one hundredth of one percent, we consider it a big deal, and you're talking of improving things by a factor of a hundred. You must be crazy. He was saying, you know, he was really taking a very different approach where work on security had to be public, whereas all those layers of uh, uh, secrecy had to be uh, removed. Uh, he was willing to say the things that, that were true, but that were not people didn't want to hear, people in positions of power. Paul's legacy is to have brought a way of communication among people uh, that at the time looked so out of, uh, out of the realm of possibilities. He had a great ability to look ahead and see what's happening. In 1967, for example, he wrote a paper, published a paper, that described how communication technology was going to uh, provide all kinds of new services in the year 2000. And he basically, amazingly described what we have today with the Internet. It said, let's look at the year 2000. And it predicted uh, the PC, the Internet, it talked about e-commerce, and basically people would be shopping over their television screens. And it basically, it said something like, there will be a big general store where you can buy just about anything, which sounds an awful lot like Amazon to me. Paul has said in his humility that, you know, he didn't do all the, he didn't build the internet. It was a cathedral that was built by a lot of people. He put out a couple bricks, and other people filled it in. And I don't quite look at it that way, you know. Paul. Paul did a lot more than lay a few bricks. He showed us a picture. Here's your cathedral. It's what it should look like. To me, he showed us the picture of the cathedral, told us how to build it. Paul felt that fellowship was very important. He was a very strong supporter of a move toward more interaction among the, uh, the fellows because he felt that uh, that would create um, uh, an esprit de corps that would be very, very 
important for the advancement of uh, not only technology, but also for the, uh, for, the, for the fun of it, for the, for, the, for the aspects, of the human aspect of interaction and, uh, and uh, mutual respect. I hope that his role as a visionary, as a successful visionary, one who was not always successful, but who overall really hit a lot of home runs, will uh, embolden others to follow in those footsteps. <laughs>